Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome. Good to be with you again today. Hope you're in for a fantastic day and a great weekend to come up. We're talking about the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus' great sermon. We're into the third one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We're talking about meekness in the context of people who have a, a different way of living, a different way of thinking, a different way of seeing life. And I guess if we were to put it in a nutshell, we've been looking at the philosophy of living of meek people that says, let God be God, man. You're not God. Let God be God. And so today I want to take you to another cry that would come from people of meek temperament, of meek, meek ability, meek, meekness because of the Spirit of God that is within them. And that is simply the cry that we want to talk about that you find in 1 Samuel chapter 24 where uh, David is at battle with uh, King Saul. But there's a, there's a history behind this. You see, the nation of Israel came to God and they said, God, we really want a king. God said, why do you want a king? I'm your king. And they said, no, you don't understand. We want a king like all the other nations. And so God was heartbroken, but he said, well, if you want a king, I'll give you a king. And they anointed King Saul, gifted to the core, looked like a king head and shoulders above the rest. You know, he was just the epitome of what they thought a king should look like. And they judged the king by having an external appearance instead of judging him according to his heart. And they appointed him to be the king. Well, he started reasonably well, but it wasn't long before he began to mess up because his charisma was too big for him and he had no character to ma manage his charisma. And he got himself into a lot of trouble and he declared war upon David. You see, he knew in his heart that David was to be the next king, but he was going to do his darndest to stop that from happening. So he chased David through the desert, up through the caves. And David was hiding with his men from King Saul. And then one day in the midst of the battle, it was hot one afternoon, and King Saul was taking a nap in his tent. And so David saw this. So he said to his buddy, he said, let's go down and into the camp of Saul. Everybody's having an afternoon nap. And they walked down into the camp and they walked into Saul's tent. And you read in 1 Samuel chapter 24 that he walked into the tent and there lay King Saul having his afternoon snooze. And his sidekick, his sidekick said to him, said, hey, King, today's your day. Look at him, fast asleep. And King, by the way, look, there's his, his spear right next to him. King, why don't you, but we, we know you're going to be the king. Here's your time. Take that spear, run him through, kill him, and then you can be the king. God, this is God's appointed time. And David said, I don't think so. I will not lay a hand to God's anointed. And his buddy was saying, but, but, but King, look, David, look at him. Here's, this is your kingdom is there to be taken. David, take your kingdom. And David resisted that temptation. And he said to his friend, he said to his friend, in God's time, he will appoint me to be the king. Basically, he was saying, the cry was, God, I know what's destined for me, but I'm willing to wait for your perfect time. People of meekness are never in a hurry. They're never in a hurry. They're saying, in God's time, this will happen. People of, of pride or people who want to make it happen themselves and take it and take the kingdom for themselves as quickly as they possibly can. But David was not like them. David was meek in saying, in God's time, I will not lay a hand to God's anointed. He doesn't mean need me to do this thing. In his time is when it'll happen. Remember in Ecclesiastes, there's that beautiful passage about all the different times, a time to be born, a time to die, a time for this, a time for that. And there is indeed a time for this. And God makes all things what? Remember the song? He makes all things beautiful in His time. Man, I need to hear that. I'm always in a hurry. But God makes all things beautiful. I mean, beautiful in His time, not yours. So let's give God time. Let's give them their time to be able to do what He needs to do to achieve what He wants to achieve, and it will happen in His time. It takes the pressure off you just to enjoy what you're doing and let God be God and do it in His time. Go and have a good day, people. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.